Hi witches, welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'm Ren, the Cemetery Witch, and today I'm going to show you what I bought down in Glastonbury recently. I'm aware that I did an Avebury shopping video recently. This isn't gonna turn into a shopping haul channel. It's actually quite rare that we'd get down to both Avebury and Glastonbury so close together. We'd probably go down there a maximum of two, maybe three times, but sometimes less. But it does tend to be where we gravitate to if we decide to have a day out. So I'm gonna show you what I bought because I thought you might be interested. I'm gonna explain a little bit about Glastonbury in the video and I'm gonna show you some clips from my trip. There's so much to see down there, it's so wonderful. And I just hope that it gives you a better idea if you're either not from the UK or you're from the UK and you have been trying to decide whether to go down there or not. So if you want to see what I bought down there, the sort of things that this witch spends her money on, then stay tuned. So good morning everyone, it's Tuesday, it's about 5.45 in the morning and we're going on an impromptu trip to Glastonbury. So we've, we've just decided, we booked it a couple of days ago, we're going to go down for one night and it, we do really, really heavy rain so I don't think we're going to do the tour and walk out to the chalice well. I'm not feeling up to it either so we're just going to go down, do the shops, do the charity shops. I usually take loads of breaks, so we'll go into lots of cafes and yeah, we just need a change of scenery really. So yeah, let's go. really really exhausted I have to say but um, I'm here now so I'm just gonna go into my favorite bookstore which is Courtyard Books currently sat in the Georgian Pilgrim's pub having a drink. It's raining pretty heavily outside and it is really really busy. I don't know what's going on today. There is the market and various other 
like little exhibitions and markets being held, like a country market and stuff, but it's the, probably the busiest I've seen Glastonbury in a very long time. So I'm just having a drink, we're going to book into the room shortly, it's about two o'clock, uh, I think we can get in from about three. Um, I'm just chilling out for now, um, we'll probably have a bit of rest this afternoon and then I don't know what we've got planned for later. I've bought some incense and some cheap books and a couple of items of clothing so I'm really happy and yeah that's it for now. for watching my video I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Glastonbury first apologies to the people here who know Glastonbury well or have visited before or you know can anticipate what I'm going to tell you about so Glastonbury is a little town down in the southwest of England in a county called Somerset and it's a small market town there's a couple of car parks there's the Glastonbury Abbey just on the sort of within the town but obviously forming um, an area on the edge there is the chalice well which is very famous and peace gardens there's the red and white spring so there's Glastonbury tour uh, there's lots to see and do down there so obviously this video is very much about what I bought shopping but if you are planning to go down there, then do your research, have a look at the other things that there are to do down there. And it's easy to get about. It is just one high street with maybe a few sort of roads off or shops down the beginnings of some other roads, but it's mainly concentrated in one high street, one road. So it's really, really easy to get about. There is um, the Goddess Temple. There's lots to see and do. There's several vegetarian cafes. There's something for everyone really. Um, we stayed in the Georgian Pilgrims, which I told you about in the Witching Week and is a very, very old, it's kind of a coaching inn really. It was um, built so that people that were visiting the Abbey, people on a pilgrimage could stay there. And yeah, it's the perfect base really. There's also a really, really amazing B&B &B called the Covenstead. We usually stay there. I think you have to have two nights there and it's a lot harder to get into. It's basically a witchcraft themed B&B. &B. It's so comfortable and it's like being in a museum really. They have a ceremony room so that you can go in there and hold your own rituals if you're meeting with people or you're with a group of people. And we find it's just like home from home. We're very, very comfortable there. But the Georgian Pilgrims is perfect too. That is a medieval coaching inn, a medieval pub. Uh, we actually stayed in the room that Henry VIII stayed in during the dissolution of the monasteries. Apparently he watched from the window as Glastonbury Abbey was destroyed. So rich, rich history there. So much to see and do. But of course, one of the biggest draws is the shops. So there is an abundance of witchcraft, pagan, esoteric shops. I think the thing I like most is probably bookshops. There's several bookshops in Glastonbury and you can pick up either the latest books or you can get your hands on some decent secondhand esoteric books. So I have got a little pile of books. I did a witchcraft or witchy book haul video some time back. I wasn't expecting to end up with more books this year. Um, I thought that was my lot for certainly until the second half of the year, but I've got a pile of books, but some of them I've paid like four pounds for. So again, it just shows you that Glastonbury is well worth the trip. You can buy secondhand books online, of course, but it's really nice to go in and pick them up and have a look and see if it's something that you think you're going to be interested in. So I've got 
five books that I bought, which I'm really looking forward to showing you. So I suppose one of the main things that I like to do when I go down to Glastonbury is do an incense restock. Um, so that, that is always one of the main things that I buy. And I would say that I tend to get incense as well because it's fairly cheap. I don't always have a lot of money to spend. I did this time around. But usually, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to spend more than about £20 in total. But I, I bought some incense this year, so I'm going to show you what I bought. I bought several boxes and I bought all new incense, incense that I'd never tried before and some on recommendation of the guy in the shop. So there is one shop in particular, um, I'll have to find its name and we'll try and find its name and put it on the description but there's a shop halfway up the high street and they sell I, I suppose it's like Indian wares like housewares so like furniture and those beautiful boutique door hangers that you get but they also have a huge range of incense and you can get incense in pretty much all the shops in Glastonbury but for some reason this is just my favourite shop and um, they have a huge selection and a lot of it is from India or from other places in the world and so I really really enjoy getting my incense from there so this is the one he wasn't burning it in the shop at the time but I could smell incense really strongly and I asked him what it was and he said it was this so this was, yeah, this was my first box of incense that I picked up. So that is lovely. We have, uh, I bought two boxes, one for my husband and he's been burning that in the house and it leaves the house smelling for days. It's really strong, but it's really, really nice. It's a bit like, it's a bit like the Dane El Oud if you've tried that. I've also picked up some Nandita. I really like their company and that one's called Wood Spice. Um, I picked up... This one, Black Forest, because I thought it had an interesting box. And then one of these was on the one that he recommended. It was the, I think it was this one. Anyway, I bought this one as well. As you can see, they're from the same, same company. And it might be this one that he recommended. I can't remember now, my terrible short-term memory. So that's, that's what I bought in terms of incense. I, so should we move on to the books next? let's let's go on to the books so i went into courtyard books which is my favorite shop in glastonbury for books and i bought the complete book of amulets and talismans by Mijen gonzalez whipler and like i was saying before some of these are really cheap so i got this one for five pounds so i like to plug the holes in my witchcraft practice so we all know about amulets and talismans and charms and things like that but sometimes it's really to get you know to get one book on a subject so that you can really deep dive and really expand your practice the next one i bought was earth air fire and water by scott cunningham um i didn't i wasn't sure if i was even aware of this book i have most of his books i really enjoy earth power that's a really beautiful book so i i sort of thought that this would just be an extension of that really so this is obviously just about the four elements and using their energies, we can transform ourselves, our lives and our world. This much loved classic guide offers more than 75 spells, rites and simple rituals you can perform using the marvellous powers of the natural world. So while we're talking about spells, I have to say that I write my own. The most powerful magic is magic that you create yourself. So when I buy books with spells in, I don't tend to copy them, to be honest. I always adapt them or use them as a starting point, a foundation for writing maybe a bigger spell or just tweaking something in some way. There might be a herb in a spell that you don't feel connected to or you feel like there's a a herb that's better placed so for example if you're doing a protection spell and you're given a particular herb you might think oh well actually I tend to use this herb for protection in which case I would swap it out I do this all the time I yeah I never ever ever do other people's spells I only ever use them really as inspiration so the next book I bought it's an astrology book. I must say, I'm getting quite into astrology. I really, really enjoy it. And this is by Janice Huntley, The Elements of Astrology. And I was just having a flick through this and I really liked what I was reading. There was some information in here that I hadn't seen elsewhere. 
I don't have tons of astrology books. I don't know tons about astrology. So probably any book on astrology right now is going to be good for me. But I did particularly enjoy this as I was flicking through. So that cost me four pounds. So again, a complete bargain for just getting started on something. I mean, it does look quite old, as you can see, but who cares? It's about what's inside the book. So I was really, really pleased with that. And then this next book, I started to read while we were in the hotel and my husband went off to do something as well. And he left me in a little spot with a drink. Um, I was having a rest and I started to read this book. And I'll be completely honest, even though we've spoken about my struggles with reading and concentration and memory, this is a book that I could not put down. And I have put it down now because I am determined to finish off the Honouring Your Ancestors book that I was telling you about in my last video on books. I'm determined to get that one finished. I'm about halfway through, but this book just kept calling me back to read more and more and more. It was absolutely fascinating. And it is a magical use of thought forms and it's just it's a comprehensive ref reference manual these are two leading occult researchers and they present step-by-step -step instructions for developing um thought forms and the beginning of the book really has been telling stories and been getting you to think about thought forms there's a story about a buddhist monk which is really really interesting and it is by dolores ashcroft Novisky, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm really sorry if you know this person or you are this person and I haven't done that right. And J.H. Brennan. And in this guide, they cover the occult art of observation, how to build up desire as fuel for a potent astral engine, the three point location of occult power in the physical brain and the creation of advanced astral structures, including God forms and angelics, audio images and astral landscapes. So I only know a little bit about thought, thought forms, um, but this seems to be a really, really good book. And just the way it's written is just absolutely fantastic. It's really simply written, but it gets across some really, really profound points. And it's just really interesting in the way that they, they tell a story. So they tend to write a chapter each. Um, I think J.H. Brennan has done the first couple of chapters. So it's not every other. It's just, you know, as and where they need to step in. So absolutely brilliant. So if you get your hands on a copy of this or you see this, buy it. Um, I'm only a couple of chapters in. So, you know, don't blame me if you get a copy and it's a complete flop by the end, but I don't think it's going to be. And I'm basically, I'm going to restart this. So once I get the Ancestor Veneration book done, um, I'm going straight on to that one. Even though I've got other books I know that I bought and I said I would read, I think it's really good for me that I've found a book that is actually calling me and you know I want to jump into it's been a long time since I felt like that with my reading if you're new to the channel and you don't know what I'm talking about here I'm talking about my ability to read as a result of many years of stress and trauma and just cognitive dysfunction as a result of having several um chronic half heart not heart health conditions including my heart so when your heart works really really hard it's, it's really hard for the brain to do its job properly. So, and when you do this over a number of years, it means that, you know, you can develop some dysfunction with reading, which I have. And it's really weird. And I don't know if some of this is also the use of electronics. I seem to be able to read okay on my tablet or on my phone. I don't think it's my eyesight. I don't think it's the fact that it's lit. I, I haven't been able to put my finger on it, but I'm trying really, really hard to improve my reading ability and get back to where I used to be when, when I was a kid. So yeah, so those are some of the books I bought. There was one other I saw that I actually went back for on the last, well, I spotted on the last day. So I shopped on the, I don't know what day it was we went down, uh, it was a Tuesday, I shopped on the Tuesday, but then on Wednesday I spotted this and I absolutely had to have it. So it's second hand, like all the others, and it's Vickery's Folk Flora. And so this is an encyclopedic guide to plant folklore, including flowering plants, conifers and ferns. So there's just about everything you need to know in here. Originally, it was £30 and it looks like they sold it in the UK only, it says. And I got it for £15, which is an absolute steal. And this is probably 
like my perfect book. Anything to do with folklore and anything to do with plants on there, uh, you know. So I've never read, read anything by Roy Vickery before. Um, but it's not really it's not really creative writing. It is the name of the plant, the binomial name, um, a small description and then local names and then the folklore. So it's very, very simple, very, very basic, but just gives you the information that you want. So I cannot wait to flick through that. Um, and as you can see, it's absolutely huge. It looks like there might be some pictures. Oh, there is, there's photographs. Um, I'm trying not to move about in my seat too much because it squeaks, but as you can see, there's some pictures there. So yeah, really, really pleased with those books. Really glad that I just took my time and just, yeah, found some books that I'm, I'm really loving. What else did I get? So what's in here? Oh yeah, so there's this shop that sells perfumes. Again, I'll have to get the names of all the shops. Um, but they're, they're called Lady of the Lake perfumes and they are characterised. So I bought Morgan Le Fay. Um, they have they have all these perfumes out and these little dipsticks and you can go around and smell them. And then they have this clever wheel in the middle. And the idea is you find the one that you like the most and then you either use that perfume or the opposite character on the wheel. So it's like your ego and your alter ego. And I've always thought that these are an absolutely fascinating idea. And I've always wanted to get one. And they do an eau de toilette and an eau de parfum. I bought the eau de toilette. Um, couldn't really stretch to the eau de parfum. Even this was a real treat. And yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. They do incense sticks as well. And they do some fairy perfumes. So inside they come in a little bag, which is beautiful. And then they have a little card that comes with them that just gives you almost like the magical information or sort of magical correspondences almost. Let me show you what's on the back. So there's Morgan Le Fay, Queen of Fairy and Black Enchantress. And it says, breathe in my essence of, and it lists the, the, the ingredients. So mandarin, apricot, jasmine. It says my place in time, October, November. My floral signs, apple, spindleberry, and elderberry. Where to find me, Glastonbury Tour. Totem animal, wolf, zodiac link, Scorpio. So I was really, really pleased with that. And I don't know how many there are. There are about, I think there might be, well, let's think about this as a wheel. Maybe there's like 12 or 16 or something. And yeah, I've always wanted one of these. And it's really weird because in that shop that sells them, they've got a range of greeting cards and they've actually, they always sell my face in there. One of the um, artworks that I featured in for Chris Down, there's some of Chris's cards in there. So it's always really, really strange to go in there and, and see myself. But yeah, so that's an absolutely fantastic shop. I'm just, oh, Fragrant Earth. I should have known that. I'll put all the details in the description box. Um, of course, I went into Star Child as well. So Star Child is uh, basically a herbal apothecary. They've got jars and jars of herbs, so you can you can buy herbs loose by weight, and they've got candles and they've got oils. Um, fantastic, fantastic shop. They have a really lovely selection of books in there as well. I'm always really impressed. I don't know who buys the books. I, I think it must be one person because they always have such lovely, lovely books in there. I bought a space aroma called Tantra, I'll just show you that. And so I just burned that in an oil burner and it's absolutely beautiful. I've bought this several times in a row now, it's one of my favourites. That's all I bought in there. Oh no, I did buy a candle, a Libra candle for my husband and a little base. Um, he was with me in Glastonbury, but um, there were a couple of moments where I just did some bits on my own. So, yeah, it's like home from home for me, Glastonbury. It's really lovely down there. It's it's strange to travel that far. But then I used to live about an hour and a half away. So I used to be there a lot. But it is a real trek for us now. But as soon as we get there, it's just I feel like I'm at home. I feel I feel, feel very content there. What else? Oh, yeah, they have the market on. So I bought from the market 
Well, I bought, I bought two things actually. I bought something for a ham fasting that I'm going to. So I won't show you that because obviously it's personal. But from Elemental Ceramics, I bought this beautiful goddess. Isn't she gorgeous? So she'll probably go in my bathroom. Um, that she had, I don't know what the lady's name is actually, it doesn't say on here. I'll put the details down, Elemental Ceramics. Um, she was such a nice lady and she had so many beautiful things. She had lots of goddesses, it was really hard to know which one to pick. And she had these beautiful, beautiful bowls that were just really reminiscent of the sea and water. Very, very elemental, lots of shades of blue and green. Absolutely stunning. I'd love to get more of her work. Apparently she just, she put that one out just that morning. So yeah, so I snapped her up, which I was really pleased with. Let me just move this out of the way. I'm gonna make a bit of a mess in front of the video otherwise. Um, also on the market, I bought some leggings. Um, I can't see from here. Again, I'm trying not to let my chair squeak. I need to get it oiled. Um, I'll put the information down for these clothes, but I bought these leggings in the sale. I've seen this lady's, um, work before she designs all her own clothes and makes them and uh, i've always wanted some so i got some green leggings which i was really really happy with what else did i buy oh yeah so there's lots of crystal shops so in one of the crystal shops which was again this was the second morning i decided to buy these just before we left so this is orange cow site and this one is, I'm trying to remember what this is. I don't think this one is sugar light. I think this one might be lipidolite. Um, I bought one of each, basically. I've got another one of these from another shop. So when I discover what that one is, I cannot remember. But yeah, so I'm gonna string those on some cord, a bit like this. This this is obviously a pouch and I've got one inside, but I do wear these sometimes, you might have seen. So yeah, so I was really pleased with those. And I'll just show you the other one I've got. Oh, this one is the sugar light one. So this one apparently is lipidolite. And to be honest, they kind of look the same, don't they? Um, I paid a lot of money for this one and not so much for that one. Um, and I also bought... I'm trying to get some different colours because I've got a green one and a turquoise one. So I wanted some other colours to go with some of my other clothes. And I also bought this, which is a Chiasta like cross. And I really, I bought it because it was brown, but they have this fascinating cross in, in the middle. So yeah, I need to read up on those. Um, I know I've said lots of times before that I don't buy crystals and I have done recently. I have to say that in the 20 years, the well, 20 plus years, 24 plus years that I've been a witch, I've spent very, very little money on crystals. Um, I do, you know, there are obviously issue, issues with the crystal trade. I still can't get my words out. And some of you that follow the channel know I've been in hospital recently and I've just had an op, so I'm doing well today. Um, yeah, I have not spent a lot of money on crystals over the years. Recently, I bought a little crystal for my husband and I've bought these, but that will probably be it for the next well, 10 years at least. So I don't invest in crystals very often. Um, I find it really difficult that, you know, the practices around them and the fact they've been pulled from the earth and stuff like that. But um, occasionally, you know, I'm like everyone else, I'm a human being, I make these decisions, but that will, that will definitely be it for a while. It's like secondhand books. I really, really I value those more over new ones. Um, in, in terms of the environment, I kind of almost think, and I know this is very, very limiting, but I kind of almost think that we just need to stop producing stuff now. You know, we don't need all the stuff that we have, um, you know, and I'm saying this from the point of view of someone who's just been shopping, but, you know, we are not going to die if we stop having so much stuff. And in fact, we are going to die if we do keep having all this stuff. So I would be quite happy to not ever buy anything ever again, you know. Um, but this is this is me. I'm authentic and I have been shopping. So I'm just showing you what I bought, but um, it does it does weigh heavily on me. So uh, one other one last 
crystal that I bought. So this is um, the crystal shop and I bought a proper pendant. So they had crystals from Madagascar that were reduced, so a half price. So um, I bought a rose quartz pendant and that was really, really good price because obviously you're probably looking at about 60, 70 quid for something like that. And I paid less than half of that. So yeah, I was really, really pleased with that. Look forward to wearing that. What else did we get? I think that is it. Yeah, that's it. That is my Glastonbury shopping haul. So let me know in the comments what you thought of that. Um, the books especially, they're obviously always a, a point for discussion. Um, for me, that's what going down to Glastonbury is really all about, having a good look at the books and finding something that you know you've not seen about not seen online and you can pick up second hand it's been used by another magical practitioner and I love that it doesn't put me off at all you can always cleanse something if you you know you're concerned about that but when you're buying them second hand it's something that someone else has let go of so I don't find there to be any particular negative energy with that but yeah let me know let me know I will list these books I will list the books I will list the shops that I went to I will list the items. I'll just give you all the information. And then if there's something that you liked particularly and you want to get a copy of, then you can find it. But yeah, thanks for watching this. I'll be back soon with more videos. Obviously, this is just a, you know, a free and easy informal video. I'm doing a series on casting a magic circle. So there'll be the follow up parts to that. I have just got out of hospital, so I'm still taking it easy. There, there will be a little bit of a delay with some videos. I'm not gonna be hard at it like perhaps I have been recently. And um, it's just time for me to rest and recuperate really. So if you got this far, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, then please subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. That way you'll never miss another video and I'll be back soon. Take care for now, lots of love, bye.